All right, welcome to our notes on isosceles triangles. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about a theorem. So this is an assumption we can make if we are told that this is an isosceles triangle. So the isosceles triangle theorem says that if two sides of a triangle are congruent, so the two congruent sides on the isosceles triangle, then the angles opposite of these sides are congruent. So something to talk about here as well is opposite angles in a triangle, so angles opposite of a side. So if we have this triangle, where's this button, there we go, there we go. So we have a triangle and it's ABC. The side opposite of A is if you take the corner and you go opposite here. So that means angle, oops. Angle A, let's do different colors. So if we have A, B, and C, this side here in red, the angle opposite of it is A. This side here in blue, the angle opposite of it is B. This side here in yellow, the angle opposite of it is C. So in our isosceles triangle, these are our congruent sides. This angle is opposite of this side. This angle is opposite of this side. And then in the isosceles triangle, those two sides are called base angles. And those base angles are congruent. So the two angles formed by the base and one of the congruent sides. Then the angle that is different, or the angle that is in between your congruent sides, so this angle is in between those sides, that angle is called your vertex. So the vertex is the angle created by your two congruent sides. All right, so in this lesson, we're going to use this rule about isosceles triangles to figure some things out. And for us, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do some labeling and uh, notation to help us with this. So I have three questions for us that we can use to do isosceles triangle practice. So example A says in the diagram find the measure of angle R and then find side PR. So the first thing we see here is they told us that PQ and QR are both five centimeters. So that means PQ and QR are the congruent angles or the congruent sides. That means that Angle R and angle P are your congruent angles. So these two are the same. So if they're the same, I'm going to give them a label because working with variables and solving equations is what makes this the easiest for us. So I'm just going to say that these are both x degrees. So I don't know what they are, so I'm going to hold that with x. So because this is a triangle, what do we know about the three angles in a triangle? So the three angles in a triangle will always add up to 180 degrees. So that means if we do angle P plus angle Q, plus angle R, our three angles, they should equal 180 degrees. I said angle P is X degrees because I didn't know what it was. 
I'm going to just leave it as X. Angle Q, they told us, is 60. And then because it's isosceles, we know P and R are the same. That means angle R is also X, because that's how I labeled it. And if we add these together, X plus X is 2X. That gives us 2X plus 60 equals 180. Subtract 60 from both sides. We get 2X equals 180 minus 60 is 120. Divide both sides by 2. And we get X equals 60. So that means in this triangle, P and R, because I said they were X, are both 60 degrees. So that shows us that all three of these angles are 60 degrees. And if all three of the angles are 60 degrees, what kind of triangle do we have? Well, we have an equal angular triangle. And we know equal angular triangles are also what kind of triangle? So if we have an equal angular triangle, we can also assume, because equal angular triangles are also equilateral. And if this is equilateral, that means all three of the sides are the same. So if this side is 5 centimeters and this side is 5 centimeters, so is this side. So that means angle R, because they asked for that, the measure of angle R is 60 degrees. And PR is 5 centimeters. All right, so next we're going to take this and do something similar. So in triangle ABC, AC is congruent to BC. So let's have you guys kind of do a little bit of this. If AC and BC are the congruent ones that I noted here, what are my two congruent angles? You can just use the letters. So the congruent angles are the ones opposite of your lines. So that means angle A and angle B are the same. And they actually gave us angle B is 2x. So if angle A and angle B are the same, that means angle A is also 2x. Now they want us to find x in the measure of each of the angles. So we know that because it's a triangle, all three of the angles should add together to give us what number? They should add together to give us 180 degrees. Now this is pretty much like question A, except uh, I'll tell you right now, it's not going to be equal angular and equilateral. That's part of why they didn't ask us to find the sides. They didn't give us any of the sides. So I want you guys to go ahead and start off by just finding x. And let me know what you get for x. All right, so x equals 25. So I got that by combining angle A, B, and C. 2x plus 2x plus 6x minus 70 and setting it equal to 180, then I solve for x. Now they want us to find the measure of each angle, and you do that by putting x back into our equations. So go ahead and let me know what is the measure of angle A, angle B, and angle C. All right, so this gives us that angle A and B are both 50 degrees, and angle C is 80 degrees. Go ahead and do our last type of question here. So we've got an x squared, so we're going to do another factoring question. 
So once again, they tell us that angle B is the vertex. So this is a different kind of information. So they're telling us angle B is the vertex. Now, if B is the vertex, there's two things we can assume. So we can assume that the other two angles that are not B are the congruent angles of this triangle. So that means A and C are congruent. And then we can also assume that if B is the vertex, then the sides that create B, so see these two are the sides that make angle B, those are the congruent sides because the vertex is the angle created by the congruent sides in the isosceles triangle. So that means we can assume BA, that side, that's this side BA, is congruent to BC. So that means those two are the equal sides. So that means BA, which is 3x plus 60, is equal to BC, which is x squared plus 7x. Now I want to get this equal to 0 so I can factor and solve for x. I want to keep this x squared as my positive one, so I'm going to move my terms to the right-hand side. So I'm going to start by subtracting 3x from both sides. That's going to give us 60 equals x squared plus 4x. And then I'm going to subtract 60 from both sides. That gives us 0 equals x squared plus 4x minus 60. So now we need factors of negative 60 that will add to 4. So first my factors of 60 are 1 and 60, 2 and 30, 3 and 10, 4 and 15, 5 and 12, sorry, 3 and 20, and 6 and 10. So since it's a positive 4, that means the bigger number is the positive number. And our smaller number will be negative. 1 plus, negative 1 plus 60 is 59. Negative 2 plus 30 is 28. Negative 3 plus 20 is 17. Negative 4 plus 15 is 11. Negative 5 plus 12 is 7. Negative 6 plus 10 is 4. So negative 6 and 10 is what we're going to factor. So we're going to have x minus 6 and x plus 10. And we've got to get our x values so that we can figure out which one will work. So we're going to have x minus 6 equals 0. And we're going to have x plus 10 equals 0. Add 6 to both sides, we get x equals 6. Or subtract 10 from both sides, x equals negative 10. So there is a chance that the negative 10 could work. Sometimes our negative number doesn't work. But we want to test it to find out. So we're going to have to try that both those numbers over here into both of our terms. So let's do that over here. So we need to try, we'll try the 6 first. So 3 times 6 plus 60. 3 times 6 is 18 plus 60 is 78, so that's BA, X squared, so 6 squared plus 7 times 6 is 36 plus 42, which is 78, so that's BC, and then 
AC is 56 minus 2 times 6, which is 56 minus 12, which is 44. So our sides could be 78, 78, and 44. Let's also check it with that negative 10. So 3 times negative 10 plus 60. 3 times negative 10 is negative 30 plus 60. Negative 30 plus 60 is positive 30. So, so far that still works as well. X squared. So negative 10 squared plus 7 times negative 10. Negative 10 squared is negative 10 times negative 10, which is positive 100 plus negative 70, which gives us positive 30. And then 56 minus 2 times negative 10 which gives us 56 minus negative 20, which is the same as 56 plus 20, which gives us 76. So this is also an option. So both of our numbers work for this. That's why you've got to check both of them just in case they do both work. So both of these are triangles that would work for this shape. All right, that's the end of the isosceles triangle lesson. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in at the end of this video.